Hello and welcome to Dukoscopy TV. I'm Jerry McDermott in the Geneva studio with Michel Girardin, Head of Thematic Research at UBP, to discuss the Eurozone crisis. So Michel, first of all, what are the main issues in the Eurozone at the moment and how can they be resolved? Well, the main issues that everyone talks about is excessive uh, public debt in the, in the Eurozone. Uh, actually, the problem is more of a uh, structural imbalance in terms of current accounts between the core countries and the periphery countries. There, there is a, a problem between the core countries, Germany, Holland, uh, Finland, and the peripheral countries, Spain, Greece, Italy, and so forth. Uh, these countries uh, have a deficit, but it, the, the problem is that they have a current account deficit. And so when they have a public deficit onto that, uh, they need uh, external savings to finance it. And that's where the problem comes in. Now, if we talk about solutions to this problem, uh, in the old days, when the, when the euro was not around, uh, we would have competitive devaluation. Every 18 months, the lira would be devalued, the peseta would be devalued. So people talk now about reintroducing local currencies. This is possible, but very costly. The alternative to that would be to provide these countries, Greece, Italy, Spain, with a much more uh, industrialized base uh, to re-industrialize these countries so as to allow them to export more. This is the solution. And why is there such a problem in the Eurozone when there is a 95% debt to GDP and in the US it stands at 100%? That's a very good point, actually, because, uh, yes, people talk about and go on about the problems of the, of the debt uh, in, in the Eurozone, and they very little speak, well, there is obviously some talk about also excessive indebtedness in the US, but the focus is on, is on Europe, and, and why? And the problem is, in, 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 in the United States, uh, there is both monetary and fiscal integration, in, in, uh, in the Eurozone, uh, as uh, Margaret Thatcher used to say, it's half-baked. We only have half of that. We have a monetary union, but we don't have a fiscal integration. This is what is lacking. Uh, if, we, if you look, for instance, the poorest uh, state in the US is Mississippi. Uh, the average revenue is, uh, per capita is about $29,000. It's the same as in Greece. But if you take a more relevant state like Washington or New Jersey, uh, this would be in the area of $50,000 uh, uh, per capita. Uh, it's actually higher than Germany. So what we can say is there are more discrepancies, there are more divergences between some states in the US as there are in some European countries. The problem is that in Europe, we need to uh, go through German Parliament to ask whether they, the Germans are willing to give money to the Spanish banks, to the Greeks, and so forth. And that doesn't work. In the States, you don't ask people from New Washington or New Jersey if they're willing to give money to the people of Mississippi when, when they have all sorts of problems from the floods and whatever. So that's where the problem is. We need fiscal integration. We need to build the United States of Europe, as Victor Hugo used to say back in the 19th century. Uh, we need one Ministry of Finance, not just 15, 17 or whatever. We need one in Europe. That, that's what's missing. And how did you feel about Moody's report on Monday as it changed its outlook on Germany? Actually, I think it's a good news. And I'll tell you why. Um, Germans were quick to say, it's not our problem, it's the fault of the peripheral countries and we're going to pay for it and this is going to uh, make our, our credit rating uh, go down. But actually, if you, go, if you dig into the numbers, you you'll see that Germany too has a problem with excessive debt. Its current debt to GDP ratio stands at 81%. But Germany is the largest country in the, of the Eurozone, so in terms of billions of euros, it's the largest and by far it's more than 2,000 uh, billion euros, the debt. So, uh, for instance, there is a talk, there is some talk about, uh, and I think this would be an excellent solution actually for, for the Eurozone, is to create a so-called European Redemption Fund. This was actually what was done at the beginning of the origins of the United States by uh, Hamilton when, he, when uh, he pooled all the debt of the states together, and that's what then created and, uh, the, uh, the, the United States of America. 
Uh, here we could do the same. We could take every uh, all the, all the European countries, the eurozone countries, sorry, and pull them together into this fund and take all the excessive debt above the 60% line, which was the, mas the, the line, the limit set by the Maastricht uh, Treaty. And if we do that, uh, Germany, so it would be 21%, right, in excess of 60. Uh, but then in billions of euro, it's huge, you know. This would be the largest contributor of, uh, of, uh, of this fund. Uh, it would be, for instance, twice as high as the, as the Greek debt that everyone talks about. Moody's report is actually, I think, a good, uh, a good point because it shows that uh, Germany uh, is not such a good student. Uh, it's the best student in class. It's the best in class of the Eurozone, that's for sure. But when we, if, we look, if we look at the numbers, we see that Germany too has a problem in terms of excessive debt. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it stands at more than 2 trillion euros. And we should look at the debt now in trillions of euros, not in percent of GDP when we're talking about integ integrating the, the whole uh, Eurozone. Um, and also, and the other point to say is that normally for uh, a debt to be sustainable, you need nominal GDP growth to be above long-term bond yields. This is true now since uh, a year now. That's been true for the last year because interest rates on the bond on the bond uh, side have been coming down so sharply in Germany because everyone wants to buy bonds. Uh, but it hasn't been true for the last, say, 10 years. So even Germany does not fulfill uh, the Maastricht criteria, 60% uh, maximum, and also the fact that uh, a nominal GDP growth needs to be in excess of the interest rate they pay on their bonds. Thank you for watching Dukascopy TV. If you enjoyed this interview, then do stay tuned as I will be back with Michel in part two to talk about his book, Money and Life, which captures the world of finance through photography. But for now, goodbye.